What a beautiful trading week and amazing follow through from the Bears. This is a weekly chart of the SPY right here. And on my last weekend video, Uncle Charters talked about how we had that bearish breakdown, the official weekly chart breakdown of the one year trend line that we had last year from October 2022 low. An official breakdown you can see on this, this past week's candle. Definitely amazing follow through. Bears are still in control, guys. Bears are still in control. I'm still not seeing anything bullish about the charts yet. All right? Yet. Could next week be a bounce week? We'll see. But it's going to have to clear some, some levels. But before we talk about the plans for the upcoming week, I definitely want to talk about how uh, we took some trades how I traded on Friday. Um, in, in the morning, I traded NVDA. And I like to go over NVDA. As you guys know, I used the 15-minute chart. I used the 15-minute chart. I've showed this on numerous videos that I use the 15-minute chart. If you're trading on a time frame lower than the 15-minute, that is not what Uncle Charters does. And if you're a Discord member, my intraday analysis updates are all based on the 15, 30-minute charts or higher. I don't go any lower than a 15-minute chart. If you're using a 15-minute chart, you might be seeing a lot of noise, a lot more fake outs. Look at this 15-minute chart. I wrote on um, trade idea plans for NVDA. This is access only for Tier 2 and Tier 3 members. I do cover Microsoft and other stocks for Tier 2 and Tier 3 members. But I wrote here for the plan for NVDA. Support is at 49.5 to the 410 zone. If 49 fails, look to short with 408, 46, 44, and so on in play, okay? That's the bear case scenario. And the bull case scenario was if above 410, next resistance at 412. If it clears, we'll look to long that with higher targets in play. Remember, Uncle Chartis trades it level to level. I've said this in numerous videos, and I will continue to say that I play this level to level. So what does this mean? This means, is this NVDA? We broke down that full 9.5 level right there. That was the trigger to go short. You want to enter as close to the level as possible when it breaks down. As it breaks down, which is stop loss. Above four, either 49.5 or 410, whatever your risk tolerance is, all right? That was the trigger to go short, just like I wrote in my trade idea. You want to short when 49.5 is lost. So what do I mean by level to level? It means when you enter the breakdown of this level, you want to take profits or most profits at the next level, which was at 408. As you guys can see, it hit. I tried to share my, uh, my trade... Like with NVDA this morning or yesterday morning, Friday morning, I wrote NVDA is a monster stock. I wrote my, you know, I shared my screenshot of my trades. And I wrote when I took profit, I sold eight, I had 10 contracts, I sold eight for 11% gain. I'm just going for base hits. I'm not going for home runs. I let my runners do it. And I wrote here, I, you know, I got a runner of two contracts. I was still up 11% at that point. Small risk. It was Friday. I didn't want to take on too much risk. So I, you know, I mentioned where to enter. I mentioned where to exit. Level to level. So I took most profits around 4 and I just left the runner. And it dropped as low as 404. I even wrote an update for NVDA. This stock is not for beginners traders, blah, blah, blah. But I did write um, 49.5 is loss and is now resistance. I said no calls unless 410 recaptures. Okay, as of now, 408, 406, and 404 are next targets. Those targets all got hit. But you want to play it level to level. If you played the 409.5 breakdown, 408 is where you want to take most profits or some profits. Depends on what you want to do. And you leave a runner and just let your runner catch more of the move for you. So the breakdown of 409.5 worked well. If you missed that setup, the breakdown of 408 work well down to 406 okay and once we broke down 406 it was a decent move almost you know a few cents shy of the 404 level 
This is why I like runners. Catch that first setup and just leave runners. You already secured most profits. So you're not risking anything and your runners will catch it. You can always add more to your winners. If your runners are looking good, you can always add more to it. All right. Now, when do we cut loss? We cut loss when our trade is invalidated. So if you went short on 49.5, you would only cut loss if the price closed back above. 49.5 so if you look at this candle here this candle at 11 o'clock closed back above uh 49.5 at 1115 but you would have already secured most profits look at this drop on this drop that by the time it, it hit your stop loss it, it probably wouldn't have phased you or you might have been moved up your stop loss it would have been made no difference anyways okay if you look at a smaller time like if you go to a two minute time frame Look at how noisy that is. Look at that. This is why I do not use anything lower than a 15-minute chart. Look at this is a two-minute chart. Look at that. It broke down 49.5. It did manage to hit 48, so you should have secured most profits there. But look what happened. It bounced back going as high as 410.4. For a beginner trader, that would have confused them. Like, wait a minute, did my setup get invalidated here? That would have confused a lot of people, but we know it actually dropped more. Now, that's a two-minute chart. Look how noisy and trappy that is. We go to a 15-minute chart. Look at how less noisy it is. No fake-outs. Less fake-outs, if anything. And if, that's no if you think that's noisy, go to a 30-minute chart. It's even less Noise. You guys can see why I use 15 minute charts and 30 minute charts for intraday movements and not five, two minute, one minute time frames. I hope you guys can see it. Okay, but this this is with NVDA, all right? I only took one trade. I just shorted the breakdown of 409.5, played it down to 408, left runners down to 404. I kept it as simple as I could. But you guys can see what is the trade setups that I always tell you guys to trade. Trade false breakouts and false breakdowns and th those worked out pretty well too if you use uncle's levels and you master the art of you know trading false breakouts and false breakdown look at this false breakdown setup led to some nice level to level move and some and then what happened when we cleared 49.5 the next candle broke back below 49.5 hitting 408 level to level it even back tested 49.5 at 12 o'clock confirming the breakdown or the false breakout which led to more downside okay look at the spy i didn't trade the morning in spy but i did trade a little bit in the afternoon but look look what happened false breakout setup at 11 15 we cleared my 414 level i mentioned to you guys that's the critical fib level all right. In the morning, it broke down 414. Look at how it broke down 414. Look at how it broke down 414 right there. And it led to a nice level to level move down in my 412 to 412.5 zone. That would have been a good trade. I didn't trade that one, but that would have been a good trade. But look at this. It bounced at 414, uh, 412. Try to recapture 414, but what happened? False breakout, which led to a beautiful move to the downside. Okay, I'm trying to get you guys to stop calling bottoms and tops and start calling false breakouts and false breakdown. It's going to be a game changer. You, you're you're going to get real good at recognizing the traps because that's what the market makers do. They want to trap us. They want to trap you. They want to trap me. But when you're good at eyeballing those, you're good at noticing those, you trade with the trap. While most of your fellow retail traders are becoming victims of the trap, me and you, sheep style, we are trading with the traps. It works with SPY. It works with NVDA. Sometimes SPY is trappy. If you can handle wide spreads and volatility, definitely consider trading NVDA because sheep style works well with NVDA because of how volatile it is. It moves. False breakdown. False breakout. Hell, even regular breakdowns of... Support and resistant work as long as you approach it with no greed, level-to-level -level style with runners. Risk management 
the four prophets. All right? So, I hope you guys got something out of that. All right? Sheep Style works with NVDA. Sheep Style works with Spy. Sheep Style can work with Triple Q, Tesla. What it wouldn't work with is stocks or ticker symbols that don't really have volume. That's why volume is important. You need a stock or a ticker symbol, ETF, whatever, that has volume because with volume, there's movements. It means it has attention. Does that make sense? You want a stock to trade something that moves, like meta, all right? Okay, so yeah, hope you guys got something out of that. Let's move on to the high time frame of SPY. Like I said, we still broke down that one year trend line. That's, you know, that, that was very bearish. I mentioned to everyone, bears are in control. And then what happened this past week? We broke down more critical support levels. I mentioned the 425. I know it's a lot of lines. Let me go to the daily chart. All right. I mentioned 425. That was the 1.382 Fib level. I said that's bearish. We lost 420. I mentioned about 420. That was a critical Fib level as well and buy zone. And we lost that. I mentioned that's bearish. We lost 417 and 414. Guys, the point of me bring, mentioning that we lost these levels, what's the point? The point is that we are acknowledging the behavior of the price action. What is the behavior of the price action on this high time frame, on this daily chart time frame? It is bearish behavior because it's breaking down support. Even when it pulled back, it just retested resistant. Previous lost levels as resistant and found selling pressure. It's just showing us price, uh, bearish price action behavior. Okay, I'm just reporting what we're, what I'm seeing. Okay, it's important to trade what we see, not what we think. And I'm not telling you guys what I think. I am reporting to you guys what I see. Bearish price action behavior. And what do I always say to you guys? Don't argue with it. Don't argue with the price action. Why? Because it is the shepherd. Me and you were just sheeps. Our goal is a P and L. A green P and L. And it's not about being right. It's not about being wrong. It's not about reporting the news. It's not about being the next Michael Burry. It's not about none of that. It's just about a green P and L. Getting that money. And to get that money, we need to listen to our shepherd. The price action. And the price action has been screaming bearish to us all along. And how does Uncle Charters preach about entering these positions? You play those those uh you play it with the levels. False breakouts, false breakdowns, level to level. Every false breakout setup has been working beautifully lately. I don't know you guys have been noticing that. But anyways, so what's the plan for this week? What is the plan? Well, I, I'm going to give you guys the bull case scenario and the bear case scenario as usual. Right now, price action behavior is bearish. So for me to get bullish, see, the RSI is oversold. It's been oversold. If you try to buy because the RSI was oversold, you got screwed, man. You got to use it in conjunction with the price action because the price action is the true indicator. It's not a lagging one either. Okay? The price action just is. So if the price action wants to show us some bullish price action behavior, that's when I would go long. And what would that look like? Zoom out. We have, like I mentioned, we have that FIB level, a macro level FIB level from all time high down to October 2022 low. At 414 was the 50% FIB level. We lost that this past week. So if we're going to be bullish, if price action is going to be bullish, it needs to start giving us some false breakdown level setup. Not just on the 15 and 30 minute chart, because the 15 minute, 30 minute chart are just 15 30 minute chart they're good for level to level moves but if you we're talking on the higher time frame where where you, where you can get you especially if you're a swing trader we need to be looking at the higher time frame 414 needs to recapture end of day on Monday or Tuesday 417 another fib level needs to recapture all right what is that 420 is another FIB level, another critical FIB level. I do have levels at 422 and 423.5, but the next critical level above that is 425. Okay, so hopefully you guys already had these levels in your charts because I did mention in a new video, uh, in the previous video. But for for new viewers, please add those levels to your charts. I have my shorter term FIB levels from 
August 18th low up to September 1st high. That's how I'm getting these Fib extension levels. And they need to recapture if SPY wants a relief bounce. They need to recapture if SPY wants a relief bounce. All right, guys. Look to long. That's the plan. I have a resistance at 412, but real critical one is at 414. Look to long if those levels recapture. Play it level to level with runners. That means 415.5 and 417 are targets if 414 recaptures. Those are the levels that you want to take profits at for summer most and leave a runner. Your runner will catch the big move for you. And will indicate to you if the move will continue. And if you go red on that runner, you're still overall green on the trade because you secured most profits. I'm trying to teach you guys to, to day trade or even swing trade safely, sheep style. Trading with the traps, not being greedy, okay? I give you guys all these levels so it takes the guesswork out. You know where to enter, where to exit. Okay? Nobody should be asking me on the Discord or in the comment session, where do I enter Uncle Charters, where do I exit? If you ask me that question, that tells me you have not been paying attention. Okay, so please pay attention because it's a lot of talking that I'm doing, but it's for a purpose, it's for a reason. It's to empower you. Empower you, I hope, at least. All right? So that's the bull case. Got to recapture 414 to trigger more upside. And if we recapture some more critical levels, 417, 420, obviously the rally continues. Could even get a short squeeze. When you get you see this many days, this much red, this much blood, and a lot of your, our fellow retail traders might start getting FOMO or getting bearish, short squeeze could be a risk. Okay? But that's why it's important I give you guys these levels so you know where the trigger is. So you know where the trigger is in case we do get a short squeeze or even just a small relief bounce. You know you can plate it and make some money. Level to level style with runners. Now, the bear case, obviously, it needs to stay below 414 on any bounce. It's possible Monday and Tuesday we can possibly try to backtest 414 to try to confirm the breakdown. Maybe even backtest 417. But what we want to see is these levels that are lost not get recaptured. Remember, false breakdown setups, when a level was lost and then recaptured, that, those are bullish setups, so we don't want to see, if you're a bear, you don't want to see 414 recapturing, okay? Even if it consolidate in base a little bit, that's fine. You want to see it consolidate, that's healthy. But what you don't want to see if you're a bear is levels recapturing because those false breakdowns will trigger more upside. So as long as 414 holds the highest, I would stay bearish. Obviously, staying below 4, uh, 412 would be great. Uh, if we break down 410, that would be great. Friday's close was 410.68. Not an official loss. It, get a, it got a little lower than 410 intraday, but we didn't lose it. But if we do lose 410, that should trigger more downside. We do have a gap. There's a lot, good amount of gaps to the downside, but the, the next one is around 405. All right? I do have support at 408, 406.5. And then there's that gap at 405. It's possible. Can that get filled? All right. So watch the price action behavior and use uncle's levels and trading approach to assist you. If you want more assists with the trading, definitely consider joining my Discord. All right, guys. Definitely consider joining my Discord. And do your best uh, to follow the levels. Okay. And don't make up your own levels. If you are going to make up your own levels, that's fine. But don't act like your levels are uncle's levels. I give you guys certain levels. Sometimes I give people certain levels. And then they bring up other levels that I didn't use or even mention. You know? So just pay attention to what uncle's saying. Add these levels to your charts. Don't make up the level and say, oh, uncle gave me that level. I didn't give you that level. It's fine I that you chart yourself. All good. I just want to be able to assist you guys. All right, so yeah, that's spy. That was a lot. We're gonna try to power through the other tickers. Triple Q, uh, tick, triple Q's next critical support level is at three forty four point six. We need that. We need that to break down. Okay, if it wants more downside with three forty two point five, three forty one point five, three forty, 
and 338.2 in play. If it wants to get bullish, got to give us some false breakdown setups. Okay. Resistant is at uh, 347 and 348.5 and 350. To recapture this bull flag, though, it needs to get above 350. 350 point, uh, 351. Okay. Still at 351. So above 351, maybe we can be a little more bullish with 353 and 355 in play. All right. But got to recapture some levels above 350 would be fairly bullish. But 351, yeah. Got to recapture that bull flag. It is sloping down. So the longer it takes, the lower it'll be. Okay. But overall, 344.5. You know, fails that support, we're likely heading down lower, especially uh, below 343-ish. Yeah, definitely below 343 would be pretty bearish for Triple Q as well. All right, guys got my levels, got the setups. Play it unbiasedly. IWM still selling off. Lost another level that I was watching at 162.5. If it can recapture... Okay, maybe we can talk about a bounce. RSI is really oversold. And despite being oversold, the price kept dropping and it got more oversold. So price action, if we're going to get bullish here, price action to recapture some levels. Started with 162.5. Definitely, uh, I got 164 and 165.7. Definitely needs to recapture that level to put 167.5. And 169 is back in play. Otherwise, below 162.5, I got 160 as the next target. And if 160 fails, holy moly, more waterfall downside incoming, maybe 158. I got critical resistance, um, excuse me, critical support level at 155.5. That's a fib level. So that could be possible as well if 160 fails. Okay, guys. Tesla. Uh, yeah, we got an inside daily candle setup here. The big range is uh, 204.8 to 214.8. That's a $10 range. So anything between that is considered chop. 204.8 to 214.8. Um, as far as the, the levels within the range, as resistant, I have uh, 208, 210, and 211.4. Maybe we could be a little bullish above 211.4 because that's a fib level. There's a gap at 213.3. Is That's something to watch. But I have resistant levels at 213, 215, 217, and 218.3. All right? So we need to clear those levels, especially 211.4 to trigger some upside. Uh, as long as below 208, next support that I have is at 206 and 204.5. Below 204.5, I'd be very bearish. Sell-off continues with 202.5, 200, and lower in play, okay? Apple. Apple, you know, it did try to give us a green day. It did recapture that 167.6 level. Something to watch out for. It is support now. As long as 167.6 can hold, uh, 170 stays in play. But if 170 clears... In my opinion, that would be pretty bullish. I would long that with 171.5, 173, 175 in play, okay? Now, if it breaks back below 167.6, that's a false recapture, and that would put 165.7 in play. That was a gap fill, and it also bounced. So if 165.7 fail, support of this wedge that I have here at 164 would be in play, and loss of 164 would be a breakdown Putting 161-ish and lower in play for Apple. All right. Overall, I can't get bullish unless 170 can clear. That would be bullish follow-through. Uh, here's NVDA. I think we talked a lot about that earlier. But I, I just talked about how I traded it. But as far as the plan goes, there's a lot of lines. I know. As far as the plan goes, it closed around 405. Um, you know, resistant levels I got is 406, 408, and then the 410 level. If we can clear 410, likely we'll head up higher, up to 412, 414, uh, excuse me, 412, 413.5, 415, 417, and possibly up to 418.5-ish, okay? But it will have to clear and recapture some of these lost levels. 
Now, if NVDA stays below 406 and break down 404, we'll likely head down lower, down to 400. Below 400, I got 398.5-ish. And maybe down to 395.5. All right, guys. Google. It looks like it's trying to consolidate right now. Uh, the levels to watch or the range to watch. Top of the range would be around 124.3-ish. Long above that. I have support at 122.6. Bottom of the range around 121. 121 fails. This sell-off continues, guys. All right. And AMD. Uh, yeah, 96. It, it got a close at 96.43. Uh, I managed to clear it. So that will put uh, now 98 and 99.5 in play, actually. Let's see what happens Monday. If those levels can clear, though, 101.5, 103 and higher is in play. If, NBA, if AMD drops back below 94.5, that's a bearish warning. But loss of 93 would be bearish, putting 91 in play. Play. okay guys let's look at the dark pool level so we had a lot of dark pool level 2.5 billion coming in at 412.6 uh and then 1.4 billion coming in at 410.62 and a little over 600 mil at 410.63 okay so watch those levels guys add them to your charts now let's take a look at the flows spy filter for 500k premiums or above here it is bearish for the spy okay triple q is very bearish extremely bearish iwm nothing for iwm tesla it's kind of bearish apple it's bearish nvda is is bullish okay google nothing for google and amd amd is bearish all right thank you guys so much for watching Appreciate you guys for stopping by. If you want more content from Uncle Charters, definitely consider joining my Discord. Other than that, have a great weekend. Peace.